let's learn about this new format called Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF. If you've been working with raster data and if you're doing a lot of analysis, this has totally changed how people do remote sensing in the modern era. This single format alone is responsible for a big shift in cloud using of cloud computing in geospatial. I'm going to explain this format in a bit, and we're going to learn why this is important to use this, especially if you're storing the data on some servers, if you're distributing this, distributing this data using cloud, you should definitely use this format for your data sets. What is COG? COG stands for Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF. It's a format that allows you to access data from a file very efficiently. Let's think about your GeoTIFF file. Right? You have all these pixels stored on the disk. If you want to read a specific pixel, the typical way to do this, you read the whole file and then say, okay, I can now read the file, the pixel value. What if the file is very big? That means to even read one pixel, you have to read the whole file. If your file is on the internet, you say, I have this file on my server, I want to query just one pixel. If you have a regular TIFF file, your software will say, I will download this whole file and then I'll check the pixel value. Versus if you have a cloud optimized GeoTIFF, it contains this additional information which allows your software who understands this format to say, oh, I want to query this pixel value. It'll tell the software that this pixel is located right here on the disk. And you can go and fetch that pixel only. So instead of downloading and checking the whole file, the software can directly go to the disk and fetch the value only of that pixel or group of pixels directly from the disk without any server in between. And this makes it very easy to access subset of data, subset of pixels for analysis and for very large data sets. Most of our geospatial data is very large. If you think about a single Landsat or a Sentinel-2 scene, it is few gigabytes. And imagine you say, I want to know what is the pixel value here in all 12 bands. That means you first have to download all of this data and then check. With a cloud optimized GeoTIFF, you can directly query that value stored on disk without any server in between. The great thing about COG is if you store your data as a COG, cloud optimized GeoTIFF, it has the same extension as TIFF, it's backwards compatible. That means if you have a software which doesn't understand COG, your file will just work as usual. There's nothing, you'll not use all the new features, but the file will still be read by anybody who can read GeoTIFF. If your software is smart enough, to support COG, it'll say I can now use all the smart features and only read the pixels I need directly from the cloud data. Let's, the best way to understand this is to try out. So let's understand how COGs work. I have this very large file, which I have stored on my Google Cloud bucket. This is my Google Cloud storage bucket. This is a static file storage system. There's no server here. It's just a place where you can share, put the data. You get a link, a URL to access this data. The advantage of COGS is they work on static file server, any cloud storage, even if you have a simple HTTP server, you can put the files there and they'll work just as efficiently. So you can see I have this file, verse ntl 20 global global.tiff, 7.9 gigabytes in size. This is the nighttime lights data that is available from the verse satellite, really nice data set. If I want to use this file and say, I want to use this in GIS, you say, okay, I have to download this eight gigabytes of data. But since I've created this file as a COG, I can do something smart. So I'm just going to copy the URL. The URL is given to you. First, understand the workflow. I want you all to try it afterwards. So I'm just going to get the URL to it. So we have the URL to this particular file. I'm going to open up QG. If I have the data on my computer system, I can open this as a raster. If I want to open the data from the cloud, QGS also allows us to do this. So from QGS, you have this button here. Open Data Source Manager. Okay. This is, allows you to access all kinds of data. So I can open this here. In the Data Source Manager, you have this raster tab. It says browse to the raster data. If your data is in a file, you can do this. But I can now say, I want to have a file that is on the internet. So I can say, show me this file. And I can paste my URL here. Okay. You can also do some authentication. Right now, I don't want to worry about authentication. It's a public file. So I just want to access this. If this was a regular TIFF, QGIS will first download the whole thing. But now QGIS understands what is a COG. When it's going to check that, if I say add, right now it's checking what's the layout of this file. It's looking at the header. And it now understands, oh, it's a COG. I don't need to load the whole file. I'll just show you this file. And you can access this file in QGIS without downloading the whole file. So right now it's just querying the header and downloading just the first bits of data to show you what the file is. And you can see my file is here. It's already here, 7.9 gigabytes. 
Let's see what happens when I zoom in. I'm going to use the zoom button and say zoom in here. So user wants data for this zoom level at this bounding box. So it's fetched this data directly from the disk. If I zoom in further, you can see it's fetching the data now. It's going to fetch only the pixels that require to render this. If I pan my thing, it say, oh, I need more data here. It's going to find those pixels from the disk and load that here. So instead of downloading the whole file, it's just downloading and showing me the sets of pixels that is needed to create this file. And this works like just another GeoTIFF file. If I want to visualize this, I can say, open this layer styling panel. QGIS says, oh, this is just a regular TIFF file. You can apply any styling. And I can just style it, do any stuff that I do with a regular TIFF file. And it just works. And so now I have this file in the cloud. I can stream it to my computer, do anything that I want. If I want to clip it, I can clip and create a local GeoTIFF file. But that time I'll only read the pixels I need to create this file. I don't need to read the whole file. And this makes working with this large files very, very efficient and easy. I'm just going to quickly demonstrate the power of this format. Let's say you had to clip this data for a particular country. And as I have this file, I'm going to clip it and use this as a local file. Well, you have to download this 8 gigabyte of file, right? Instead, now I can just say, oh, I have some data. So let's say I'll select a small country. Let's say I want data for Nepal. So I say I just want to create, clip it to this particular polygon, and I have my data. So now I can say, QGIS, let's clip this to this. And I'm going to use the clipping tool. You can say input layer is this data. You can see it just works like a GeoTIFF file. I will use the selected features from this. And now I want to save this file. And I'll just say Nepal nighttime lights. I can save it as a TIFF file, right? Direct TIFF file. And I can say run. What's happening right now is QGIS says, I need those pixels that fall in Nepal. It's going to query that file that's sitting in a cloud bucket. It says, send me only the pixels that I need to create in this Nepal clip version. So it's not going to send 7.9 gigabyte of data. It's going to send only the few megabytes that is needed. And you can see in 15 seconds, I was able to take this cloud data and create this GeoTIFF file sitting on my computer clipped from that file. The same applies if I want to use raster calculator to do any analysis. I can use this file and stream only the pixel that is needed to create this. It's a game changer for all of your remote sensing workflows because now you don't have to download and process the data. You can stream only the pixels you need. We have examples where you can say, I want the pixel value from the whole time series. Last 30 years of time series, I have all those cogs. Click, it only fetch the pixel values from those 30 files and you'll get those values rather than you know trying to download all these 30 years worth of data. Right? So this is the modern a way of doing remote sensing. This is the new approach is known as a cloud native geospatial. How do I create a cog from my existing data set? I have some aerial imagery, satellite imagery, animation data. How do we create it? Well, the best way to create a cog is using the GDAL commands. You can say GDAL translate. GDAL has support for cog format. So you can say, I want to take my input data, convert it to a cog. I want to specify this output format, cog. So if you just say dash OF cog, and you use the cog format and you will get cloud optimized geotech. So for aerial data or satellite data, if you have the data on the disk, non-optimized will say GDAL translate dash OF cog input and output. And the output file will be cloud optimized. And then you can upload it to a cloud bucket and assess it using all these smart features of cog. When you use a cog driver, a cog for it to have a valid cog, it needs to have some additional features. So when you create a cog using GDAL, it says, okay, I want to use internal tiling because that's what it uses to efficiently read the data. You can see when you're zooming in and out and you're panning the data, you're fetching the data for different blocks. And that's why you need this internal tiling so GDAL can know where those blocks are and fetch this data. So all cogs must have the internal tiling. So the tiling is turned on. By default, all cogs are compressed using the LZ double compression. You can use all of the compressions, but by default, if you don't specify anything, it has the LZ double compression. It also has this feature where you can select the predictor automatically. So you don't need to worry about one or two or whatever. You can just say predictor, yes. It'll choose the best predictor that's available for the data type. So these are kind of some of the internal implementation for the call driver in GDAL. We just use it, and this is what's happening under the hood. 
when you're creating talk, it also is doing this compression, tiling. Also, it's creating those overviews. It's creating this low resolution versions of the raster, which is stored alongside the data. This makes it very easy to zoom in and out and access low res version of this data. That takes a bit of time to create it. So there is one option, the creation option, num threads all CPUs. That means if you have a multi-threaded CPU, you have four threads or you have four core CPU, it's going to use all of that for creating that. So generally, when you're creating cogs, at least turn on this option, which will make the cog creation go much, much faster. So if you're a very powerful computer, you can use this and it'll create cogs much faster than everything else. Okay. So let's do section 1.1.5. We'll run this command. So now I'm going to take this and say, take the original VRD. And we want to convert it to a cog file. So we'll specify output format is cog, not JTIF. Merge.vrt to merge underscore cog.tiff. Compress, deflate, predictor, yes. So remember, we change this from true to yes. It'll figure out what's the right predictor for this. Num threads all CPUs. So we're going to use all the available CPUs and we'll set the no data to be this custom value. Let's run this. This is now creating the cloud optimized GeoTiff. It's creating this styled layout, which is efficient. It's also created this overviews. So it created different low resolution versions of this data so you can access this efficiently. Let's go and check the, the file size. You can see my merge.cog is slightly bigger than my merge.tiff because this extra space is taken up by this additional metadata or header information that it needs to know where everything is. And also it has created overviews. It is the low resolution version of this data stored in the file itself which allows you to kind of access this data very efficiently. So COGS are slightly bigger than your original file, but as we learned a little later in the class, you should also create overviews for your uh, requirements to make this load faster. So again, the difference delta is not too much, but again, it needs slightly more space to store this additional information. But if you're distributing this on the cloud, that means your clients can now say, oh, I can just access this data directly without worrying about tiles or any other server. In the old system, you had to create tiles and people would have a tile server and then you access the tile server, it'd be slow and inefficient. Now all those servers are gone. You just store the file as cog and your clients can directly access the data at whatever level, at whatever zoom level, whatever portion of the file you need.